Hi, I'm Bill Kelly. Tonight, the final chapter in our story about three Newfoundland fishermen and their adventures in Nicaragua. Undaunted by a savage civil war, the Newfoundlanders went down to Nicaragua to try and help local fishermen help themselves. Under a special aid project funded by Oxfam, the Newfoundlanders were asked to show the locals how to adapt the cod trap to their fledgling mackerel fishery. Nicaragua and the Newfoundland Connection, part two. When we left you last week in the Nicaraguan fishing village of Elastiero, things were going just fine, right on schedule. The trap was nearly finished, and the Nicaraguans were doing most of the work themselves under the ever watchful eyes of our three Newfoundlanders, Bernard Farrell of Renews, Bernard Martin of Petty Harbor, and Sam Keynes of Portland Creek. It will still be a couple of more days before the trap is ready for the water, but the Nicaraguans by now are quite capable of finishing the work on their own, and Mark Alain of Oxfam suggests the Newfoundlanders' time might be well spent on a mini familiarization tour of the country, getting a first-hand account of what's going on and seeing for themselves how the war is ravaging this tiny state of three and a half million people. It is not a pretty picture. For the past seven years, Nicaragua has been languishing in a brutal civil war. A war that pits the ruling Sandinista regime against American-backed guerrillas. Right now, there's an official ceasefire, but at last count, there were 50,000 dead, and the country was destitute, spending more than 50% of its budget on the war. Nowhere is the war more debilitating, more demoralizing, than in the thousands of shanty towns scattered throughout the country, particularly in the larger cities. The war means people who might otherwise have decent housing must continue to live in squalor. Where pigs and other livestock share the same putrid soil with humans. Where in place of healthy children, there's disease and widespread malnutrition. And where day after day, people are forced to line up for food rations, knowing there's never enough to go around. Despite awful living conditions, most people here still support the ruling Sandinistas. And it's not unusual at all to find them out celebrating the revolution and protesting American interference in the internal affairs of their country. The anti-American message is not lost on our Newfoundland fishermen. Over on the rags on down the, another three thousand Marines in uh, Honduras and put right on their doorstep. You know, youngsters and women and everything getting killed by uh, this day and age. It don't sound don't sound much like Christianity. It sounds like something else. You know, for a man of his ability and got like the United States. You know, to to go picking on a little starving naked country like Nicaragua. Right? It hurts you. I think that the, the government that they have there now will, will prove out right, you know, if they had a chance. Which they're not getting a proper chance right now. The leftist Sandinistas came to power in 1979 after a popular uprising toppled the regime of Anastasia Somoza. Over 100,000 Nicaraguans cheered the revolution as young rebels armed to the teeth roamed through the jubilant crowd. For decades, the Somoza family had ruled Nicaragua with an iron fist and a heart of stone. Somoza and his cronies owned most of the arable land and held the people in virtual bondage, amassing great personal fortunes from export crops like cotton and sugarcane. All the while, the peasants who worked the land were going hungry. Under land reform, much of the property controlled by Somoza was confiscated and turned over to cooperatives run by the peasants. Co-ops like the one we're visiting today in the northern town of Esteli. Our guide is Oxfam's Mark Delan. Well, this is what they call a, a self-defense co-op. Means that they're, the farmers are not only farming during the day, but they're also defending the co-op. Uh, you know, they always got their guns pretty handy to them because they never know when the Contra will attack. Before the month of June, 1979, all these families uh, lived on this farm and they worked for uh, a big politician who owned the land. And they were like, like 
peons, they call themselves, you know, they're uh, considered part of the property of the farm. If he sold the property, he sold the people with it. Under the, uh, the other system, before the revolution, peasant families didn't have enough beans to survive, and their kids were dying from malnutrition because they didn't have enough beans to put on their plate in the morning. And so they were never left with enough even to, to survive, you know. It was, it was less than subsistence agriculture. Quantos años tiene usted? 74. I got, I'm 74 years old. Y nació aquí en esta... Aquí nací. I was born here on this farm. And you've lived here all your life? Y siempre vivió aquí. Siempre, siempre aquí hasta, hasta, hasta esta fecha de hoy. Uh, until today, I've always been on this farm. I'm born here and spent all my life here. So you still work the farm every day, just with, just like the young guys? Entonces, usted sigue trabajando aquí en la finca, siempre, o sea, todos los días, sí. como lo, igual a los jóvenes. Sí, lo mismo. Bueno, hay una diferencia muy distinta ahora con el Frente Sandinista, ¿verdad? Que uh, yeah, tiempo, I, I work every day just like, like everyone else, but things are a lot different here now since the revolution. I mean, before, the poor worked for the rich, and we could never get ahead. But now, since, since the revolution, we actually own this land. We have title to this land, and there's 47 heads of families that are working in, on, on this property farming it in a cooperative way. Our families are living here and we're supporting ourselves. And we're not working for the rich man anymore, we're working for ourselves. <laughs> well, I guess it reminds me a lot of back home. Well, I've heard stories about years ago when the fisherman was uh, was treated much the same way, eh? You know, uh, the merchants took all their fish and uh, they sold it for whatever they get for it. And, they, uh, and the poor fishermen always come out in the fall a little bit know all. So, but that's, don't worry about that, you know. We'll fit you again next year and you'll go fishing for us again. And every year they come out a little bit more, just enough to, uh, the merchants had them under their finger and them and they keep them there every year, every year. So, I guess those people was much the same until the revolution. The biggest cash crop on this farm is sugar cane. But as our Newfoundlanders soon discover, it's back-breaking work. And like twine mending, you've got to have a knack for it. Bernard. You ready to give up the fishing boat yet and go at this full time or what? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> what do they think of Mark? Well, they say, uh, you know, if he was around for a while, they'd probably make a good cane cutter out of him. <laughs> it'd probably cost more to feed him at first than he'd be producing. <laughs> Back in Elastiero, they're ready to pull the trap. But Sam Keynes has run into an unexpected problem. This is a from Boyk, Ms. Varney. Oh, her root. Got right down the finger. Never, never knocked me out, though, never. Not really. A scorpion bite can be quite dangerous. It very often causes minor paralysis and can sometimes even be deadly. But Sam Keynes appears to be okay, just a bit shaken up. A pain a lot and right, got right burny and everything, but the hour so on, I was feeling good. And so that was mine, that's six lakhs mining, so I thought I should survive now. <laughs> <laughs> I got half a fight. <laughs> Only sure of one more days left, I got myself. Oh boy, boy, I guess the whole Sam you had. <laughs> now, the acid test. Will the trap work? Can it be adapted to the Nicaraguan mackerel fishery? <laughs> Sam Keynes is convinced it can. The Nicaraguans, he says, are excellent fishermen. All they need is the proper gear. Oh, they're good fishermen. You don't have to show them anything the second time. And they're getting along good now. They can go down. Uh, we just sit down and we watch them. They can all that trap just as good as what we can, you know. Perfect, eh? You know, they got nothing to do, nothing with, eh? They, you know, they're, they're down and out, and they're, 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 they're so far down, they can never, never, ever get up, you know, they'll help from people like we and from other countries, you know, help them out or something. And they're just, uh, you know, they're, they're poor and poor. If uh, we had our kind of boats down here, you know, this wind would be nothing, you know. But uh, with them little dog outs and that, well, it don't take much when, it, uh, you know, when you get south there half a mile or so, you start wondering, you know, <laughs> you're going to get back and <laughs> There's not much in the trap today, mainly red snappers and catfish. But Sam Kane says that's not the fault of the gear, just bad luck. The intentions when we made the trap for down there would be the mackerel. But apparently, uh, by the time we got our trap ready and got out, the mackerels moved offshore. 
So uh, they're, they figured they'd take up the trap now after another week or two. They figured they're going to take the trap up and then put them back out again next November when the mackerel comes on shore, eh? And they figured they'll do real good. The Newfoundlanders find the small catch a bit disheartening. But Mark Alain of Oxfam says by Nicaraguan standards, they're doing exceptionally well. We were thinking in thousands of pounds of fish and unfortunately, we didn't get the trap in the water in time uh, for the, the big mackerel run that was in the bay. But the trap has been catching, you know, probably averaging 120, 130 pounds of fish a day, which in Nicaraguan terms is, is quite good. And it's in areas where, where uh, they, the Nicaraguans wouldn't have been able to catch any fish with their gill nets. So uh, all in all, the trap's been a real success and we're really looking forward to the future, to, to next year. Uh, and to some of the ideas that have, have come forward, the co-ops would like us to come down with another trap, and they would also like us to, uh, to try uh, introducing or to try building a, a flat bottom 22-foot um, Newfoundland boat to fish the trap with. So the boats are the worst of it. They're the little dugout boats. Oh, my. You can't fish in that, eh? you know. But they get slimy because they don't know the difference, you know. So if you don't know the difference, I guess you, you don't miss something you never had. To the downtrodden people of Elastiero, people who are just barely getting by, the Newfoundlanders have brought a glimmer of hope where there was only despair, a sense of renewed confidence where there was only desperation. We've learned a lot from the Canadians, this fisherman tells us, and they promised to come back. We only hope they will. The Newfoundlanders will definitely be back, but now it's time to leave, and the whole village of Elastiero has turned out to say goodbye. The Nicaraguans don't have much to give, but they're a warm, generous people. What little they have, they're eager to share. The Newfoundlanders are held in great esteem here. They're honored guests, and for one of them today, a very special honor. I didn't know you were leaving so early because they're so soon. Because uh, there's going to be a wedding here soon, and, and we're going to have the child baptized at that oh. at that time at that oh, ceremony. Yes. And I was going to have you come and, and be the godfather at that. Unfortunately, Bernard Martin won't be able to stay, but he'll be made an honorary godfather at the christening. We can hardly speak for the poor old dog, but everybody else is having a great time as the party carries on from afternoon into night. The hospitality is great, pure Nicaraguan. But Bernard Farrell is about to give the festivities a distinctively Newfoundland flavor. The accordion is a popular instrument in many parts of Latin America, but it's new to these Nicaraguans and Bernard Farrell with the wild colonial boy has very quickly become the center of attention. It's time for a break now, but when we return, our wild colonial boys will be back at home with a couple of Nicaraguans in tow. Please stand by for the rest of Nicaragua and the Newfoundland Connection. Welcome back. The scene switches now from the sun-baked coast of Nicaragua to the great northern peninsula of Newfoundland. How you doing, Sam? How you doing? Oh, Sam Keynes is back now to more familiar fishing grounds, a nice change from dangling over the side of a dugout canoe. And a couple of the Nicaraguans have joined him for further training. Pedro. And that's uh, Mario. Uh, Pedro, Mario. Yeah. Hello. How are the boys enjoying it? Good, yeah. yeah. You've never seen a boat like this in your life? No? <laughs> no. Compare this to a dugout. And... No comparison, eh? No, I'm going to put them in a little... Sam little... says he's really pleased with how quickly the Nicaraguans have caught on. They've learned an awful lot, he says, since he first ran into them in Nicaragua. They're fishermen, eh? They're fishermen right out and out. We can't show them nothing. 
Just something we got that they ain't got, they never saw before. But just show them once, and they can take that motor and they can start it and they can run it or get on it, they can. But they just ain't got nothing, eh? Pretty pleased with the way uh, oh everything worked out. Like Sam, other fishermen in Portland Creek can't get over how hard the Nicaraguans work and at how fast they catch on to things. They're great workers. Really great. They're very fast learners. So you were really surprised, were you? Really, yeah. Uh, all Sam told me what they were like, but I couldn't believe that they were so good as what they are, you know. You take we fellas if we don't know nothing. We don't know nothing, eh? But uh, perhaps if we go and learn a little bit. We had to all learn too one time. But by Jesus, I don't think ever we learned so quick as they learn. <laughs> Just yeah, saying, no, by Jesus. So you're really impressed with Holy Christ, yes. I like to have them back when the fish is thick. That's what I like to have them back when the fish is good and thick. <laughs> be a good hand then, eh? Oh, he loud. Yeah. You do some business then. Yes. Be a wonderful help. For sure. Yes, sir. I guarantee you that. The Nicaraguans tell us they're getting along just fine, with the possible exception of the weather. They didn't even think they were going to see the sun. <laughs> well, so far you haven't, have you? <laughs> Back at Sam's house, Mrs. Keynes is busy preparing supper. The Nicaraguans, she says, never had homemade bread before, but now they can't get enough of it. Tonight, it'll be fried salmon and potatoes with lots of bread, of course. Mrs. Keynes has her hands full with her extended family, but she says the Nicaraguans are easy to please. They'll eat just about anything she puts on the table. What you got for supper tonight, uh, woman? Hi. Salmon. <laughs> what? Salmon. <laughs> yeah. Come on, come here. Come on, sit down. Come on, come here. Have supper. Mrs. Kane says she's really enjoying having the Nicaraguan, but language presents a bit of a problem. If I could understand them, I'd, I guess I'd enjoy it better. I don't understand their language, and I guess they're, they're saying by mind, they don't, don't understand me either. <laughs> you can imagine how Mrs. Keynes feels, trying to look after a bunch of strangers who don't even speak her language, but she needn't worry a bit. The Nicaraguans think her food is just great, and they couldn't be more impressed with the hospitality of the Keynes family and the people of Portland Creek. From the Great Northern Peninsula to the Southern Shore. Today, the Nicaraguans are on their way to Renews, to spend some time with Bernard Farrell. The talk is about the countryside, a lot like Ireland, their interpreter tells them. It is, too, right down to the wet, soggy weather. This is Bernard Farrell's new boat, just got her a couple of weeks ago, and anxious to show her off to the Nicaraguans. She's two years, just about two years old. She's a real nice boat, I like her anyway. She's a lot smaller than the other one I had. She's 32 feet long and uh, 10 and a half feet wide. The other one was 36 foot long and 11 feet and a half wide, 11 and a half feet wide. The Nicaraguans will give anything to have a boat like this, but that's totally out of reach. So far, they don't even have the right gear. The winter, they're hoping to get a 12 fathom trap themselves, right? And uh, there's what they'll be learning now is how to use that, that depth of a trap, right? What they'll need for the for the haul. They definitely don't need dugouts for hauling them. <laughs> <laughs> the Nicaraguans hope to pick up a few tips from Bernard, but they won't be learning much today. It looks fine and smooth on the surface, but Bernard's got a problem. Yeah, there's too much tide here to haul now. We'd only go on drifts, eh? Too bad, but tomorrow's another day. Maybe we'll have better luck down the shore ways at Petty Harbor. <laughs> Petty Harbor at five o'clock in the morning. It's a bit damp, but beautifully calm as skipper Francis Chafe and his crew set out for the nearby fishing ground. 
You'd never say it by the look of things right now, but the Nicaraguans are about to experience the unpredictability of Newfoundland's east coast. The forecast is bad. The weather is closing in quickly. Bad weather is no big deal for Skipper Chafe. He's used to it. But poor old Pedro is in for quite a time of it. He's already freezing, and the worst is still to come. The forecast was right. The sky looks menacing, and she's about to open up. As bad as things are, the Nicaraguans are certainly holding their own. They're doing really well. Bernard Martin, the petty harbor man who went down to Nicaragua, is encouraged by their progress. They didn't really know what they're doing now. What, what is it? The question of getting the feel of the gear and that kind of thing? Oh, yeah, well, I mean, they're, they're good fishermen, right? They know. They know what they're doing, you know. And, uh, I mean, even when we were down there a few months ago, towards, you know, getting towards the end of it, we could really see that they were starting to, to get the feel for it, right? And starting to uh, think for themselves and, you know, they were, they were doing good and, and they're doing really well now. I mean, this is like a logical, uh, you know, uh, extension, I suppose, of what we did last winter to bring them up here and give them uh, an opportunity to see a few different uh, trap designs and, you know, experience different uh, conditions, right? It's going from bad to worse, and our skipper's mood is turning as foul as the weather. Rain is one thing, you don't mind that, but no fish, that's quite another. <laughs> I said, if you had to stay at home, we'd have got a few fish. But what a mean trick to play on, the, on, the, on these poor guys from Nicaragua. Promise them a civil day on the water, and then deliver it like this. <laughs> well, down comes the rain. <laughs> Gotta hold on to go, though. It's the least we had here in a year, babe. Yeah? And the worst. Where to get the coin out of here, sure, but... This is good work normally, is it? Oh, this is good work. This is the best part I'm in the water. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Well, you've never seen this morning out here. Nah, we get it to eat. Yeah? There's fish there on the back. See, the boys are getting it. Right. And uh, what do you think of the boys? This is your first chance to see them in action. Nicaraguans. Oh, the boys? Yeah. Oh, we wish we'd keep the whole summer. Yeah? The Nicaraguans won't be able to hang on all summer, but they only wish they could. They're grateful to be here, no matter what the weather. Uh, we feel very grateful because the boys here have given us a good opportunity to learn a little bit more, and we hope this will uh, keep, uh, happen again in the near future. Two hours later, the boys are in, soaking wet and freezing cold. No fish and a bit disheartened. But Skipper Chafe's got the perfect antidote for sagging spirits, not to mention hungry stomachs. It's a feed of fish and brews, served up just as he would have done it aboard the boat had the weather been better. Skipper Chafe tells us it's traditional in Petty Harbor to serve the food on a platter and have all hands dig in. It's a new one on us. We've never seen it before. But it makes sense when you consider the shortage of space on a trap skip. Right you are, Augusto. A nice way to round out the day and to finish up your trip to Newfoundland. The Nicaraguans are back at home now, but the Newfoundland project is far from over. Oxfam in St. John's has already sent down all the supplies for a new flat bottom boat and a 12 fathom trap, and our guys will be going down shortly to do the work. In the meantime, Oxfam is preoccupied at the moment, trying to help another part of Nicaragua devastated by a recent hurricane. The storm killed 200 and left 200,000 homeless. The Nicaraguans keep getting knocked down, but they don't give up. Neither should we. Good night, everyone. <laughs>